you want to come to the to one? Call PJ Tokyo Kimura. No my hiding my TK Friday Kadare Hill or Tama Kima Kodo. Welcome guys to another training keeper day here at Auckland Zoo. Today we're getting to know the animal experiences team. We'll tell you more about what it means to be part of that team shortly, and we'll even meet some of them and one of the animals that they work really closely with. down here in the Australian bush track and you might see a number of colourful, bright looking parrots flying around me. But we're going to be focusing on a different species today. So come along with me and let's meet who we're going to be working with. Well, the species that we're going to be focusing on today is the sulfur crested cockatoo. And you might be familiar with our friend Captain, who lives here at Auckland Zoo with us. Before we get stuck in though, let's take a moment to track our learning. And to do that, it's really handy to use a KWL chart. You can find one of these on page three of your Trainee Keeper booklet. First of all, just take a moment to consider what you might already know about Captain or Sulphur Crested Cockatoos in general, and jot those things down in that first column on the left. Then, take a moment to consider what you want to find out. What are you wondering about? Jot those things down in that middle column. And then, at the end of our day, you can jot down everything that you've learned, a bit of a summary, in that third and final column. And then you've got all of your learning collated in one nice little table. All right, time to get started. Let's go meet Cat and her wonderful animal experiences. Team. Welcome to our trainee keeper at Auckland Zoo and we're really excited to be working with one of the most unique teams that we have here at Auckland Zoo, our animal experience team and we're lucky enough to have one of their amazing keepers with us today. So I do have to ask though, what is your name? So my name is Letitia. Letitia is your name, awesome. So we have Letitia here with us who's one of our amazing animal experience keepers and she is going to Telling us first of all, well, what do animal experience keepers do? So we do what other zookeepers do in that we look after animals, we make sure their habitats are clean and they're provided with all the food and care that they need. So that part's the same. And then uh, we just do a lot more encounters than the other teams do. And our role has a special role of trying to help people to form a connection with wildlife. So we're hoping that we can inspire people to care for all the precious tonga, all the wildlife that we have here, and then if they care about them, they're gonna care for them and want to help save them. Awesome, what a great role that you have here. And we're really lucky that our animal that you're gonna be learning a lot more about is our fantastic sulfur crested cockatoo here. So this is the fabulous captain. And he originally comes from Australia, well, his species comes from Australia. So we're going to learn how to be an animal experience keeper here today, in particular looking after our self-requested cockatoo. So I guess some things we need to know to begin with is, what are some of the amazing adaptations that self-requested cockatoos have? So you can look at Captain and he currently is showing you a couple of those adaptations. So he is holding his piece of corn cob, which is one of his favourite things to eat, and his very special feet. Now those feet have a huge name, it's about this long, and it's zygodactyl. Very fancy word, basically means two toes point forward and two toes point back like that. So it means they can hook on to their food and grasp, which is exactly what Captain's doing. You can hopefully see there, he's got two toes that side and he's got two toes that side which means he's got a secure hold, and then he's using that very special beak at the front of his handsome face there. So that beak is not only for eating food, it's also Captain's way of feeling the world, tasting, if you like, what everything feels like as he goes around. So he will use it to test the hardness, to scratch on things, and he will use it as an additional limit as well. So he will use it like an extra foot, can help them climb down around things so it's very strong about a third of the muscles in their body are devoted to that feet 
So yeah. he can chew through the wood, through a nut, but he can also hold a sunflower seed and crack the husk without damaging the seed inside. So they can be delicate or they can be strong. So some of these holes are things that Captain has created. Yeah, so if you look at this hole here, so he dug his way all the way down the stump, and his hollow there, there's a little cheeky window that he has. His nest goes down to about there in it. He also made a little highway that goes up into the natural hole that was already there. This hollow was there, but it only went that deep. It's now that deep and goes about that far back. So it sounds like you have to be really careful around Captain, especially with your fingers. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm looking at his beautiful sulfur crest there. So can you tell us a little bit about his crest? So, <laughs> so that beautiful crest there is not only to make him look more handsome, which of course it does, it's about communication. So if Captain raises his crest up, so you can see he's fluffing those facial, those facial feathers out. So that's like a proper to smile. Then we can get that crest up like that. Now that crest being fully erect, that's what we mean by standing up on edge like that. So that is telling us he's either excited or he could be worried or maybe he's a bit annoyed. So it's just a very alert state of mind. So it's a very big way. We will wear a smile. Captain Wizard. Oh, great way. Oh, look at those strong feet. <laughs> so that was yeah. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Good work, Captain. Showing nice us your adaptation. Yeah. Awesome. You mentioned how Captain has made these holes all through uh, this tree and he has it as a bit of a net where he burrows. So what does Captain and a sulfur crested cockatoo really need in order to have a habitat here? What do they need to help them feel happy and healthy? So they need, because they are very clever, they're about the equivalent of a two to three year old child. And so they need things to keep their minds ready. If we want Captain's body to be healthy, we need his mind to be healthy. And how we do that is by giving him things to do, things to think about. So with this, he can create his nest. He's got different options for doing it. He can strip the bark off if that's what he wants to do, and sometimes he does. And we do things like this. This is called a grass knot. So I literally got a lot of grass and I tied it in a knot. And then there's some little treats from his lunch hidden inside. So Captain gets to rip all of that apart, which is one of his favorite things to do. Then we have things like the pine cone hanging here. So we can actually be waiting for this one to open up, but we can put little bits of seed or treats in there. He's got the climb over here and this is moving. So keep his balance, get things out. So those are all things to keep his mind stimulated. But this stump here, Gives some different yeah. options. So he can be over there, he can be down here, he can be down like that. So it gives him choice. So that's all part of enriching. Awesome. I love that. So not only is his habitat somewhere where he lives, it's also what really helps with his enrichment. So it allows him to work his body and his mind. And lives, works, and plays. <laughs> now, when we go home at the end of the day, does Captain stay here overnight? So he doesn't stay here. What we do is we ask him nicely, and he is normally sort of nestling in because it's getting colder. We call him out. We have um, tea here. So this is called a tea perch, and we ask him to step up onto this. We put some treats in here for him, and then we walk him up home. So he has a lovely aviary that is off display but it keeps him safe at night because in here he would be um, out in the open if there were storms, high winds, um, or if there's also some predators who break into the zoo like rats or cats, he would be um, a bit into them. So we keep him safe and warm. He's always happy to have How lucky is Captain to have two times in the zoo? That's right. Thank you so much for talking to us today and letting all of you know 
how you can be an amazing animal experience keeper here at Auckland Zoo. And we hope you have lots of fun learning more about sulfur crested cockatoos like Captain. And we're looking forward to seeing the amazing designs that you come up with. Thank you. and we're going to fill in two of our activities. We need to think about where a sulfur crested cockatoo would live. In your booklet now, you need to design a habitat for the very special sulfur crested cockatoo, okay. just like Captain. Really think about what this species needs in its habitat to not only feel safe, but really engaged. So have a little bit of a think about what Leticia was talking about and see if you can incorporate that into your design. We can't wait to see it. You might like to draw it, build it, design it on Minecraft, whatever you like. Have fun. I hope that you're having a great day completing your Keeper for the Day training for our Sulphur Crested Cockatoo. Now these birds are actually introduced species here in Aotearoa and they were introduced over 200 years ago by humans. You can actually still see wild populations of them in the Waitakere Ranges here in Auckland. Sulphur Crested Cockatoos are interesting and intelligent parrots but when they're living here in the native forests of Aotearoa they actually compete for space food and nesting sites with our native birds such as our native parrot the kaka and even some of our native birds such as the tui here. There are other introduced bird species who call Aotearoa home. Many of them were brought here on purpose and some were brought here by accident. Some examples that you may have seen around your neighbourhood are house sparrows, minor birds, starlings or even blackbirds. Now many of these bird species do really well in urban environments. Whereas our endemic and native birds need wild habitats that are carefully protected in order to survive. Your task is to do a bird survey in your neighbourhood using the instructions in this workbook. You could do the survey in your backyard, at a local park or even at your school or kura. You're going to find out what kind of birds are living in your neighbourhood by then researching the birds that you find and finding out whether or not they're endemic, native or even introduced species. Once you find out what birds are living in your neighbourhood, you're going to research how to be a kaitiaki and look after them. You could have a go building a nectar feeder for birds such as tui who enjoy eating nectar, or you could even have a go planting some native plants, and that can provide these birds with some yummy kai or even a nest to call home. So, once you've had a go doing some of these kaitiaki actions, please share what you do with us here at Auckland Zoo. We love to see what you guys get up to. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for joining us for another day of Trainee Keeper here at Auckland Zoo. We hope you had a fun day getting to learn a bit about the animal experience team here and animals like the sulfur crested cockatoo and captain. As always, we'd love to see whatever you do create back at home or school, so please do share it with us using the hashtag CreateWithAucklandZoo. And until next time, ka kite.